If you're having a bit of a struggle with finding the ins and outs of kettlebell training, then I'm gonna help you with this video. I'm gonna show you what kettlebell training and the kettlebell itself is all about. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag here. On this YouTube channel, we're about all things kettlebell. So if this is your first time here and you want to learn more about kettlebell training, like the video and consider subscribing. Step number one, invest financially and time-wise in a good kettlebell coach. I believe one of the most valuable learning experiences that you can have is in one-to-one -one coaching. And I do understand that there's also value in learning from video. And I wanna speak from experience here. I have learned from video as well when it comes to kettlebells and other stuff. And sometimes this works very well. When Steve Carter visited us in June 2019, this was the pivotal moment of my career as a coach and as a trainee. The inputs that he shared with us and the feedback that he was able to give cannot compare to any learning experience that I've had via video. So yes, there is value in learning from video. However, you probably need some crucial feedback for you not to store the wrong information in your cerebellum. So then once you visit a good coach who tells you, hey, maybe you're doing something wrong or maybe you can do it better in this case, you will need additional brain power to reprogram this habitual movement. So to sum it all up, invest some money in a good coach. You won't regret it. Step number two, differentiate between exercise categories. When you work with the kettlebell, there are different exercise categories. One is the ballistics, where you work with a ballistic element involved in the exercise, and the other one is a grinding lift. These lifts do not involve a ballistic element. So if you look at the kettlebell, ball-shaped with a handle attached to it, it is made perfectly for those ballistic movements. So let's check out these ballistic exercises First, we believe that there's three exercises that are the basics when it comes to ballistic movements. The first one you're probably familiar with or the probably heard of it is the swing. The second one, clean. Last one, snatch. The ballistic exercises take more time to master. However, they're the most fun. And with these exercises, you can work for a very long time and work your body in a way you've probably never experienced before. The grinding lifts, we believe, are seven exercises that we consider as basics. The first one is the row. The second one is the deadlift. The third one is a goblet squat. Number four, reverse lunge. Number five, strict press. Number six, the windmill. And number seven, the Turkish get up. Step number three is a segue from step number two. Start with the easy lifts first. If you're a beginner and you take a look at the swing, you probably see one motion, this pendulum, right? However, if we deconstruct the exercise, we see multiple phases. The hinge ready phase, the backswing, hip extension, hand over, amortization, backswing. This deconstruction allows us to understand the ballistic exercise 
better. So the ballistics may seem complex and a little bit complicated. So what I want to advise you is to start with easy lifts first. For example, a deadlift, which is a hinge movement, pushing your hips back, upper body reacts, knees are unlocked, and then working your way in the posterior chain, make sure your back is straight. This is an easy movement or just a row or just a simple strict press. That's why we call them grinding lifts because you have to grind through the lifts and use all of your power. Just because that exercise category, the grinding lifts, is easier to learn and easier to master, doesn't mean that you won't get a lot of bang for your buck. Now step number four is choosing the right weight. Ladies, you want to start with an eight kilo kettlebell. Even if it is heavy or it feels heavy, especially when it's in the rack rest position. What this weight teaches you from the beginning is to work with your midsection, with your legs when it comes to pressing or just working with the kettlebell in general. If you use weight that is too light, then you will use most of your arms instead of using the power from your legs. Now, when we talk about a strict press, of course you need some power to work it. However, the kettlebell is dominant in the midsection, especially when it comes to the ballistics. So choosing the eight kilogram is the best decision for ladies who never touched the kettlebell before. Guys, you want to work with a 12 kilo. It's the same thing. Even if it feels heavy in the rack rest position, start using your midsection because like we've mentioned before, this is where the kettlebell has its strongest point. If you go below, if you start with an eight kilo because the 12 feels too heavy, that's totally fine. However, we have had the experience that most men can start with the 12 kilo and be safe with it. Now step number five is choosing the right size. Check this out guys. Now we have an eight and a 12. Same size, that's the competition kettlebell. So, this is lighter, this is heavier, but I still know how to handle both of them because I have adjusted my technique to this size of a kettlebell. If you choose different kettlebells in different sizes, then you'll have to accommodate your technique for every single size that you pick up. That's the reason why we believe it's the best thing to start with competition kettlebells only. Now if you have a standard kettlebell that we consider not the best option, but at least you have a kettlebell and you can work with it, go for it. But if there's a chance that you're a beginner and you want to start with the right kettlebell, then choose a competition. And just a quick side note, we don't often talk about absolutes when it comes to fitness or training in general. However, we believe that standing for something is good because otherwise you will fall for anything. That's why we consider the standard kettlebell that changes in sizes inferior when it comes to learning the best technique or having the most fun with the kettlebell in itself. Now step number six is invest in a good kettlebell. Please check out this video where we have a price comparison and check out the prices in more detail. What I want to say is just briefly make sure that the brand is well known, that they're an authority in what they do, and make sure, like we've mentioned before, that it's a competition kettlebell. Beginner's guide number seven, you will engage in so-called neuromuscular gymnastics. Now what does that mean? Now check this out, if I rack the kettlebell in the rack rest position, you know what happens? Elbow makes contact with the ilia crest of my hip. Now the kettlebell is resting on my hip and on my hip muscles. Now I'm using skeletal support, but I'm also using some muscular support, but not from my upper body. My upper body is relaxed. I'm using most power from my legs, my quads, my glutes, my hamstrings. In this rack rest position, upper body is relaxed, lower body is tense. Now if we're going to the overhead top fixation, now, upper body's tense, lower body is relaxed. You have to help your body when it comes to kettlebell training and independently trigger those muscles. You have to learn what it feels like, how to relax the upper body, and how to tense the lower body, for example. So you have to understand these different characteristics of the neuromuscular aspects when it comes to triggering those different muscle groups, and this takes 
time. That's why we call it gymnastics. This is a pretty advanced step for beginners. That's why it's pretty high on the list. But I wanna hammer this point home, how important it is to really feel your body, to understand the aspects, to understand the intra and the intermuscular situation, how they work together independently or dependent upon each other, and you wanna feel it, and you wanna learn it, and you wanna start triggering, start making these connections when it comes to the neuromuscular situation. And this will help you in your kettlebell training a lot. Step number eight, we're almost done with the list. B patient. Patience is something that most of us have a lot of problems with. We want it to be done yesterday. In today's day and age that we live in, we get everything quick and fast. It's instant. When it comes to kettlebell training or just exercising in general, understanding the movement, understanding how your body works with it, understand how your body feels in space, understand how your how the kettlebell feels on your body in those different positions, rack position, backswing, overhead top fixation. This takes time. And I can tell you from experience with our clients as well as with myself, just hammering those reps, always thinking about the good information, trying to apply the information until it becomes inspiration takes a lot of time. And you want to work those reps continually and use the basic movements to really store them as intensively as possible in your cerebellum. Any exercise or any sport or everything that you do, if you wanna be a master at it, you have to have a lot of patience. Beginner's guide step number nine, you need a proper warm up and mobility routine, just for you to understand it. If you work in the swing, for example, this works your hips, right? Your pelvis is in motion. When we work overhead, shoulders, and this, for example, the windmill connects upper body and lower body, or an overhead squat, for example. This requires for you to move well with your body weight only before moving often under load. Most of us are extremely tight in shoulders and hips. And before we wanna use load and work these muscles, most of us need some relief. We need to mobilize the joints and maybe loosen some muscles. So if you're interested in finding out what a proper mobility routine looks like for starters or even for advanced folks, check out this video right here. The final step, workout duration and frequency. Now when it comes to duration, if you're just starting out, you're probably doing fine with five to 10 minutes of kettlebell training. If you're a little bit advanced, you can start with 15 to 20 minutes. And if you've been working out for quite some time and your technique is safe, you can work with about 30 minutes per exercise. You can do crazy stuff as well. For example, we did a one hour workout where we didn't put the kettlebell down for 60 minutes straight. We called it a marathon. Check out this video if you wanna do this workout. But hey, it's for advanced folks only. If you're just a beginner, please be responsible and safe. From experience with our clients, we can say that 30 minutes high intensity is probably enough for most people. And when it comes to frequency, before I wanna tell you what I wanna advise you per week, I wanna say the following. The frequency over the year matters more than the frequency over the week. If you do three to four workouts per week for the next two months, and then you stop working out altogether for the next 10 months, you've probably wasted your time. What would be better is to work out consistently one workout per week for the next 52 months weeks for the whole year. So keep this in mind. Again, we can talk from experience. Most people do well with three workouts per week. This is totally fine for the most of us. Now, if you're advanced in your technique and you're stronger and you also understand the nuances of training, so that means maybe if I went a little bit intense yesterday, I feel my body, now I wanna work out again, maybe I have to dial it down a little bit, you can work out almost any day or every other day. But it depends on a lot of factors, for example, like I've mentioned, technique, your fitness level, and how well you're able to move, so on and so forth. Bonus step for you guys, decide which kettlebell style you wanna 
choose. We can say that there's two kettlebell styles. The first one is the kettlebell sports style, which we are proponents of and that we do. And then you have the heart style. Now let me show you what the kettlebell sport looks like when it comes to the swing, for example. Now I want to work as efficiently as possible with my energy levels. So therefore my swing looks like this. As you can see, my upper back is bent a little bit, but that's totally fine because I want to work in the hips. So my upper back has a natural kyphosis, that's one thing, so I don't have to worry about it. And the second thing is the hips take the brunt of the weight, so there's no problem with my back whatsoever. Now this allows me, working like this, allows me to profit from the so-called law of exercise. And working with the law of exercise means that I can work on my technique for way longer time and therefore improve in a much shorter time frame. Now, like I said before, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. I believe the kettlebell sports style is the best way to train. I believe it is better to train in the kettlebell sports style than in heart style. But that doesn't mean that I think that heart style is bad or that people who do it are bad. I just believe that working with the kettlebell and working with my energy capacity as efficiently as possible is the best way to go. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like it, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.